because he as I, over here, he could. I am telling you something. His son has a magnificent voice, an incredible voice, really gifted. And if his son has that gift, the father must have it too. I can skip the generation. <laughs> We can we can start the party. Here you go. Oh, we gotta wait for you. You're an important person. There's one down. Right here. Right here. One up front. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the outfit. Yeah. Oh, it's pretty. Thank you. Nick Green and Cover Green. Yep. Good, nice fall colors. Nice fall. Hey, but we don't have a pianist, so we're gonna have to sing. A cappella, right. And so we, <laughs> which is a little bit scary. If, if. Now, do we have any more walls? Yeah. Well, there's a bit of back there, but here's one on the chair. Can okay. this one here? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Now I've got two. <laughs> uh, thank you. Everybody okay. have one? All right. Um, so, but we still going to send some, some songs, but it needs to be songs that we all know. Okay, you can go a cappella. We got nobody playing again, usually. We had something yeah. Uh, but he decided to go to a birthday party. <laughs> so, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Uh, so, anyway, uh, let's pick out some three songs we will say. Number 37. 37. What number 37? 37. Oh, we all know that. What a great one to pick as a way to kick. Kick this off. Is that? Oh, no, no, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. We good to go? Yeah. All right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Wait, wait. Wait. You can get right. You say you can get right. You can start with prayer. Well, <laughs> we, we, we <laughs> certainly can. We haven't usually done it before, but we sure oh, can. Yeah. But we're starting with prayer. Yeah, okay, so let's have a let's have a little prayer. Okay, that's a good idea to me. Oh, it's right. Oh, yeah. you never you never say no prayer. Okay, so let's have a little prayer. Lord God, thank you so much for giving us this time together and bless us as we worship you in the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Okay. Ready?
15. I got a question real quick. Yes. Fifteen. Oh, his eye is on the sparrow. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Everybody got fifteen. I got two. Well, we're gonna we do twenty six after fifteen. So remember that number, twenty six. Okay, ready? Why should I fear? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely as long as heaven can come? When Jesus did my portion, my constant friend to see, his eyes on the sparrows, and I know he watches me. His eyes Amen. Yeah. 
verses to what's in the book. Um, now, we're going to have a word of prayer. Are there any particular needs that anybody here has to, to share, things that we need to remember? Yeah. My cousin is right now in the hospital, right up there. Okay. Cancer. Okay, your cousin is in the hospital? Yeah. So we need, we need to keep. Well, the cancer, we don't know how far it's going. Okay. And she's only three years older than me. Oh, my. So we want to keep her out in our prayers. Oh, yeah. She'll keep herself out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And what's your, what's, your, what's your cousin's first name? Nancy. Nancy. So we want to remember Nancy, Nancy in our prayers. <laughs> Very nice and distinguished name. Anything else we need to remember? Yeah, we ought to, ought to, ought to remember the Autumn Leaf Festival. Okay, the, the Autumn Leaf Festival that we had in Clarion. Right now. Yep, there, there's... They're still doing well, things right there. <laughs> yeah. So we want to remember that in our prayers. Anything else? Eric Twilliker had a stroke. Yeah, that's what I heard, Eric Twilliker. Uh, we want to remember him in our prayers. Uh, absolutely. Now, we, I don't know if you all have heard when watching the news, but there's a lot of people in a part of the country I know really, really well in North Carolina that are having a lot of problems because of the, the hurricane, Helene, and yeah. we want to remember a terrible thing. And you know, you got people that uh, don't have water. Jeez Louise, they don't have water and they don't have shelter and, and things that we just take for granted. And uh, they really struggle. So we want to keep all those folks down there. And, That's you know. true. North Carolina, came down on an outside line. Like their right. It, it's it, where the storm came yeah. north. And a lot of those places like in North Carolina, they're not ready. You, you're talking about mountains that are flooded. Mountain towns that are flooded, which is crazy. You, know, you don't have much floods in mountain towns. But, you know, they are. Uh, and so it's, it's really tough on them. And, th and we also want to remember there's another hurricane barreling towards the, the west coast of Florida. Right now it should make landfall in a couple of days. So it's it's bad. It's bad time of year. You know, you got a lot of storms, yeah. and these are big ones. And so uh, we want to remember all of that in our prayers. Anything else? Well, Bill, you you are our yeah. prayer now. Bill's going to lead us in prayer, and we'll we'll finish with the Lord's prayer. Okay. Okay. So let's pray. And dear Lord, do we feed you to? Remember, from North Carolina, clean down south, for all the, uh, the meanness you lift that lift that, that we were dealing with there. And then we want to remember Eric Trueger, and that's the name that's been brought up by numerous different members in this, in this POD building. And then uh, remember the Autumn Leaf Festival. And then uh, it's one of the only things I can't think of what, what, what it was. You know about it. And then Father taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Okay. Um, I, got a, I got a question for you. Have, have, um, what, what is something nice 
that you might do for a neighbor. You know, it could be in here, somebody that, that li also lives in country. What would be something that, that you think would be really nice, that they would enjoy, would, an act of kindness? What would, be, what would be something you could do that would show, show kindness to a neighbor or a member of staff? What would be, what would be an example, do you think? What's that? Mow their lawn. You can mow their lawn. Okay, good. Mow their lawn. That's it. That, so if mow the lawn is an act of kindness. What were you going to say, Bill? I would, I would invite them to church. Okay, you could invite them to church. That's an act of kindness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Help them out with something. Help them out with something. Okay. That's all, almost anything. Just help them out. All right. Anything else you can think of that would be nice that you could do to somebody, for somebody? You could just pray for them. You, you Okay, you could, you, could, you could pray for them? Sure, sure. Okay. Now, I want you to imagine then that you have decided you're going to be nice to this person and you are going to mow their lawn. I, yeah, if you want to do it today, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> okay, going to mow going to mow lawn, going to ask the church. So you say, I'm going to mow your lawn. And I'm going to ask you, you come with me to church. And I'm going to do something really nice to you. And you know, I'm not going to talk about it, but you know, you are my prayers. And you say this thing to the, and how would you expect the person to react? If you said to them, I'm going to mow your lawn. I'm going to do something nice. I, come on with me to church. How do you expect them to act? They're going to be surprised. You think they're going to be happy? If, they, if you mowed their lawn, do you think they'll thank you? Now, you're not mowing their lawn and then saying, that, that'll be $25, please. Uh, you're, you're mowing their lawn out of an act of kindness, right? So you mow their lawn, you've done something nice to them, you've asked them to church, you're praying for them, and you expect them to be happy, right? And maybe even, thank you very much. I appreciate that. You, you, that is an act of kindness. You are a truly nice person, right? Yes. What's that? They'd be shocked. They'd say, oh, I'm so shocked anybody be that nice to me. Instead, that's what you expect. So you do this and they expect, and, and they say, huh, mm, yeah, how come you didn't cut the backyard? And I don't like the way you cut around the trees. I know. Uh, uh. And go to church? I don't have time for that kind of thing. Who do you think you are? You saying I need church? Bill, you think I need church? Yeah, you do. No. Okay. <laughs> Doing something nice? Yes. You don't think I can do it on my own? You're saying I'm an invalid, can't take care of myself? And praying. Oh, you're praying for me. You think I need prayer? I don't need prayer. Uh. Now, if the person if the person said that, would you be surprised? Yeah, yeah, you don't expect that. I'd be surprised if a person did that to me. You know, if I said that kind of thing. And, and how would I, how would you feel if that's what they said? You'd be surprised. How else would you feel? Hurt. Okay, yeah, yeah, you'd be hurt. I know I'd be hurt. Yeah. I mean, you did something really nice and they, they didn't appreciate it. Uh, maybe mad. Debbie would be mad. And, and she's right because I did it to her last week. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Uh, you might be, might be mad, disappointed, frustrated, maybe a little bit of angry, certainly hurt. That's how I feel. And, and if it happened once, you might say that's just one person. But what if it happens the second time? Third time? Are you going to be as quick to, to offer to cut somebody's grass? If you've heard three times the person say, you know what you could do with that lawnmower. You know, would you, would, you, would you do it again? Ask them again? Do it again? Maybe not. If, they, if you ask them to church and they come out with what? I don't need church. Are you going to keep on asking them? Maybe, maybe not. You know, even praying. If they say, keep your prayer to yourself. Well, you may find somebody else to pray for, right? A lot of people to pray for. We can get really discouraged when we focus on the negative response.
And you know, it's really interesting. Jesus told a story about this very thing. You know, Jesus taught, most of what Jesus taught was in stories. He told people stories. And in the stories, it was meaning. And he told this wonderful story about, and you may have heard it before, uh, about a farmer who's scattering seeds. Do you remember that story? Farmer scattering seeds. Well, let me tell you. Farmer's out there in a field. Out there in a field, and he's scattering seeds. Right? Okay. Now, what does that farmer want as he's out there scattering seeds? What is he looking for? Why is he scattering seeds? Yeah, he wants them to grow, right? He wants to have a crop, right? You're not scattering seeds just as a hobby. You know, he wants to grow a crop. So he's scattering these seeds around. And some of the seeds lands on like a road, like on pavement. Now, if you've got seeds on pavement, is that seed going to grow? Not a prayer in this world. You know what's going to happen? Birds going to fly by and eat that seed. Squirrels going to run by and grab it. You know, that seed is not going to grow, right? Some of the seeds land that seeds that he's sowing. He wants a crop. And some of it's falling on earth. Some of it falls on soil that is really, really thin. Really thin. Now, if you got just a little bit of dirt and you got a seed on it, it will that seed grow? If it's got a little bit of dirt? Well, you know it might. If the dirt is wet, you know, if the dirt is moist, it might grow. And in fact, it might grow really fast because see the rock underneath that dirt is maybe a little bit warm. And so that seed is kind of almost like in an oven. You know, it's, it's wet and it's warm and that seed is going to grow maybe really fast. And then what will happen, because it doesn't have much dirt, what happens when you plant, have a plant and you don't have much dirt? What's going to happen when you get a poinsettia at Christmas and it's in that little teeny pot? What's that? You better transplant it. You better transplant it because it doesn't have much soil. That, that poinsettia is going to what? It's going to die. It's going to wither and die. And that's what's going to happen to that plant. So he's got some seeds. Is it going to produce any grain? Heck no. The seeds on the, on the road, is that producing any grain? Heck no. You know, some of the seeds are going to fall with weeds. You know, there are weeds out in the garden. Man, I've had gardens for years. There are weeds. Now, what happens when you plant something and you plant it and there's a whole bunch of weeds start growing? What happens to the little bitty plant you, you plant when there are a whole bunch of weeds? The weeds kind of take over, don't they? Kind of choke out that plant. Now, if that farmer who's thrown out his seeds, right, some on the road, is that producing any, any crops? Is he going to get any grain from that that on the highway? No. Is he going to get any grain out of those seeds planted in shallow soil? No. Is he going to get any grain planted it with seeds or with seeds that he's planted among weeds? No. Now you tell me. If you were that farmer and you had planted, scattered your seeds and all those seeds went to, uh, a lot of those seeds went to those places and you didn't see anything growing on the road or in the shallow soil or in the weeds, how are you going to feel? You going to feel happy? No, you're not going to feel happy, right? You're going to feel what? You're going to feel mad. You're going to feel discouraged, right? You're going to feel frustrated because you want a crop and you're not going to get it with those seeds falling there. And in fact, a farmer can get so discouraged that he's going to say, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm just not going to plant seeds because they don't grow. And what Jesus says is what the farmer needs to remember is when he's going across the field throwing out seeds, scattering seeds, some of it will land on roads and some of it will land on shallow soil. Some of it will land among the weeds. But you know what? Some of it's going to land where? On soil that is deep and fertile and good. And the seed that falls on soil that is deep and fertile and good. You know what's going to happen to that seed? It's going to grow. And how is it going to grow? 
it's going to grow and it's going to be really, really healthy. And that seed is going, going to grow into a stalk. And on that stalk, you know, with wheat, you got the little seeds with the wheat in the head. And some of those, those stalks, they're going to have seven seeds, little seeds in that one stalk. Th not seven, 30. You plant one, you got 30 little seeds. So one seed produces 30. That's pretty good, right? <coughs> some of the seeds are going to produce 60. Whoa, that's one big grain, right? And some of it's going to produce a hundred. In one head of grain, it's going to produce a hundred seeds. Now, if that farmer, if that farmer focused his attention on the road and the shallow soil and all the weeds, He's going to give up and not and forget that so many of the seeds he scattered is landing on good soil. He's going to lose his focus and not focus on the good that's being done. Now, what does that have to do with you as you go about your living? Well, sometimes we can focus on the negative. We can focus on what we don't have. We can focus on, on problems. Or... We can focus on, like I used in the illustration at the beginning, the negative re responses we get. We can focus our attention there so much that we stop doing good and we forget that we, the good we do is like planting those seeds. And those seeds and the good we do and the kindness we show can grow into stalks of wheat and can produce an enormous amount. The kindness you show to one person, that person may show to five other people. That's where we need to keep our focus. We need to focus on the good soil and the good that's going to result from us scattering the seeds. That's what Jesus said. So, let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, thank you so much for giving us this wonderful lesson. Because in this lesson, we get an idea of how we could be living. Help us to focus as we're out there scattering seed, as we're out there doing the best we can, as we're out there showing kindness to the people around us. Remind us that, yeah, some of, some of the kindness we show is not going to be responded to well. And we may not get the sort of response that we'd like. You know, that's the way it is. But also remind us that every act of sign, kindness we show has the potential of making a difference in the life of another human being. And what's more, every act of kindness we show has the possibility of becoming two or three or four or 30 or 60 or 100 acts of kindness that that person may show. Remind us that the good we demonstrate, the faith we live, may have a big difference on the world around us. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Good. What you want to sing? What would you like to sing? We haven't decided, we haven't decided yet. We're going to decide right now. 104. 104. 104. 104. Now, swap. Everybody got it? Oh, here you go. No, I don't have it. Well, that's what I'm going to give it to you. Thank you. My book to you. Now, I don't have it. <laughs> okay, we all got 104. I love to tell the story. Can you help us with this? No. Sing. No. <laughs> Come on, baby. This is right. oh, see, there you go. I love it. All right, let's go. I love to tell the story of a
brothers and sisters, go now in peace. And don't be distracted by the bad. Instead, embrace the good. And show that good, that kindness, that care to the people around you. And I'll tell you, it's going to make a big, big difference. And to empower this walk, receive the blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And the people of God said amen. 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 Very good. Thank you so much. Very good. Thank you.